Now there's a lot of different ways to get started. Certainly you could build from scratch, you can use an existing template, you can leverage one of our 50,000 global partners, uh, they're a fantastic resource. If you're starting with a spreadsheet, it's actually as simple as a drag and drop. So I'm going to take that customer spreadsheet and drag and drop it right into my Fondica Pro Advanced. Now let's go ahead and give this a name, we'll call this Coastal Corners Contacts. I'll go ahead and save that. Now I did want to point out that I am designing and building on a Mac, but these are the same exact steps that you would follow if you were building on a Windows machine. All right, so we now have our first look at the start of our FileMaker custom app. Now we're immediately taken into what we call table view, and this is just a spreadsheet-like view. You can do a lot of the things that you would do in a spreadsheet. There's another view I wanted to show you. This is called form view, and this is where you can view records one at a time. Now, this is not the end result of what we want our custom app to look like. We want to create our own views. So where do we get started doing that? Well, over here on the right hand side, I'm going to click this edit layout button and this takes us to layout mode. So this is where we can design that look and feel and interface of your FileMaker custom app. And you can actually create as many views that you want. So I'm going to go over here on the left hand side, click this new layout button. We'll give our layout a name. We'll call this customer details. We have some templates to choose from. In our scenario, since we're going to be working with our sales team, um, they have iPads, we'll choose an iPad template and we'll choose to build this out in landscape of view. So I'll go ahead and click on that finish button and we now have a blank slate for us to begin designing our custom app. So let's start with some literal text. I'll give this layout a title. So I'll just type customer. Type. Uh, customers here. We also have a logo that I love to have on this layout as well for some branding. So let me jump to that logo folder. There it is. So I'm going to take that image and I'm going to drag and drop it right onto that layout. Now you're going to hear me say that term a lot, drag and drop, as we work through the interface and designing aspects of their from like a custom map. Just keep in mind you can make your custom map as simple or as complex as you wanted. If you want to just create a singular task-oriented app, you can do that. If you wanted to develop more pro code fashion, jumping into JavaScript, uh, leveraging data APIs to connect to different systems and services, you can do that as well. And you're only limited by your imagination in terms of how you want to pro solve your problem. Now, the next thing we want to do for this custom app is get some information onto our layout. And in FileMaker, information is stored in what we call fields. Over here on the left hand side you'll see that I actually have some fields in my field list. Where did they come from? Well these were from the spreadsheet. FileMaker automatically took those columns and turned them into fields for us. Certainly we could have created a customer field, manager field, and an email field from scratch but again FileMaker just automatically turned them into fields for us during that conversion process. Now, next thing I want to do is we have some areas that Coastal Corners Landscaping will be landscaping for each uh, company. So we love to get some photos into this custom app as well. If we look at our fields list, we don't have a field for images, but that's okay. If I click on this new field button here down at the bottom left, let's go ahead and give this field a name. We'll just call this photo. And I'm going to change that field type from text to container. Now a container field type this stores media files. So if you want to track documents, images, even sound files and movie files, you can put that right into a container field type. Now the next thing I'd like to do is I want to track if this customer is active or inactive. Maybe later on we could build a report for inactive customers and make that part of a follow-up campaign. I don't have a field to track the status yet, but we already know how to make fields. So let's jump back over to that new field button over here at the bottom left. We'll call this field status and we'll make sure that is a, a text field type. So again, we'll drag and drop that over our, to our layout, just like that. Super simple. Now there's different ways I could input data into the status field. Certainly I could type in active or inactive but that feels like an area that I can try to automate or just make it a little bit easier for data entry. 
So let's highlight that field and let me jump over on the right hand side to my inspector and jump over to the data tab. Now the, the default control style for a field, a text field is edit box. That means that when you interact with it, you click in that field and you can start typing. But if I select this menu, you can see there's different ways that I can input data. I can turn this into a drop down list or a pop up menu or when it's appropriate, I can turn it into a drop down calendar. For this scenario, let's just choose pop-up menu. Now I need to associate some values to that menu. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new value list. I'm going to click on that new button over here at the left. We'll give this a name, really simple, we'll just call this status. If I wanted to, I could choose values from other fields, but in this scenario, it's really straightforward. We'll just create our own custom values, active and inactive. So I'll go ahead and click OK. All right, now, pretty good start to our custom app. Let's go ahead, exit layout mode, and start interacting with what we've built. So I'm gonna click on the exit layout button at the upper right. I'm now in browse mode. Again, this is where I can interact with the custom app. You can see that if I want to, I can click on that status field and I'll start making some changes here. If I walk over to my folder where we typically store images, I can grab that Bryant Research image and drag and drop that right over onto the container field. All right, we're already starting to solve some of that scattered information issues. And this is not just kind of like a read-only work with just the records that you have custom app uh, that we're starting with. If I wanted to, I can just start creating new records. So I'll click on this new record button. I'll add a new customer. I'll go ahead and promote myself to a manager and we'll say that uh, this is brand new active customer as well. So a really great start. Um, let's start thinking about this area over here on the right hand side that we can start working with. Again, we have that spreadsheet of work orders. We'd love to get that historical information tied to the appropriate customer. And we'd also like to have the most recent contracts available to the sales team as well so they can have the most effective conversations when they're out in the field. So we're going to uh, start designing again. That means we need to jump back into layout mode. So in the upper right corner, we'll jump to the edit layout button. Again, we're now in layout mode and I'm going to leverage this tool called a tab control. And a tab control, it's just a, uh, an object that allows you to take the best advantage of the real estate that you have on your layout. It's a great way to organize. So let's start creating some tabs. The first tab will be for contract and the next tab will be for work orders. We'll go ahead and create that, make a full justification. And I do want to save myself some space over here for later on. Now the way it works is that I can place objects or fields on a particular tab and then I click or tap on that tab to interact with those objects or fields. Really straightforward. So let's start building out the contract tab. We don't have a field to store a contract, but again, we know how to create fields now. So let's jump back over on the bottom left to the new field button. We'll create a new field, we'll call it contract, and we're gonna change that type from text to container. Again, this is gonna store media, so we want that to be a container field type. And I'll just drag and drop it right onto my layout. Again, this is exactly what you do when you build and design your layout. Just creating objects, creating fields, placing them wherever uh, appropriate on the layout. I'm going to bring over this other field called contracted work. And uh, this field essentially just stores the jobs that we've agreed to perform for the customer. I'm going to add another field called uh, signature. Okay, so we'll create another field. So I'll show you later on that you can actually store a signature right into a container field. So let's just do some quick alignment here. Again, these are just how you would approach your solution in terms of how you would move objects around. Again, really that simple and easy. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll save the work orders tab from now. Let's jump back into browse mode. Okay, you can see that we have that contracted work here. Let's walk over to the contracts folder that we have for Bryant Contract. And again, Coastal Corners Landscaping, they used to spend 
hours trying to find the most up-to-date information and searching through bins of files, but now we have all that information right in one easily accessible location.